At the age of 10, I began to dedicate myself to the game of baseball. 26 years later, and after 12 seasons in the major leagues, I am writing this to officially announce my retirement. It is never easy to walk away from something you love, but it is simply my time to do so. I was blessed with ability, work ethic, along with good fortune. Every player has a support system to lean on, as well as mentors to help navigate the path forward. Without these people in my corner, I would have never been able to overcome extreme adversity when success seemed impossible. I am thankful for all of my teammates throughout the years and also every opponent I went to battle against. Every victory, every defeat are all part of the story and I wouldn't change a damn thing. Failure taught me things about myself that success could not and for that I'm grateful. Don Carmen told me that no one promised you easy and to fight on every pitch. To all the future stars, I encourage you to commit completely to your craft, develop mental toughness, stay in the moment, and get to know your teammates personally. Over the next few years, I will be committed to being a father, husband, and coach, along with product development, ambassadorship, and starting a podcast with Barstool Sports. I look forward to bringing the same intensity and dedication to these new arenas. Thank you all for tuning in and being a part of my career. I love you all. With appreciation, Jake Arietta. Action and welcome back to starting nine and welcome Jake Arietta to Barstool Sports. It's great to be here, Carl. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't really envision this happening mm -hmm. the way it has. But uh dude, just pumped to be a part of the team. Yeah. Looking forward to it. It has happened though. Uh we should say off the top, for people who followed starting nine before, obviously Dallas and Jared have moved on. Um, but baseball lives on, baseball at Barstool lives on, and it is now firmly in our hands and like you said i'm looking forward to it and i should say congratulations on the retirement it was a beautiful letter i think that's the first time anybody's retired in a letter and then at the very end unretired yeah it didn't last long you know when we were talking it was probably i think it was march 22nd <laughs> you reached out to me and said hey we should do a show together right my response to you that I signed with the Tokyo Giants, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I'm probably not even good enough to sign with the Tokyo Giants, which is uh, a, kind of funny in its own right. But crickets from you. Yeah. No response. I ghosted you. And there's a. What were you thinking all right, so during that time? I owe you an apology for this. I ghosted you because I wanted to talk you out of moving to Japan. I was like, that's a horrible idea. Like, if you're going to move to Japan, you should probably just like hang it up. But then I didn't have like the right words and then I forgot to send it to you. And then it was like a day later and I was like, fuck, I didn't I didn't get back to him. And I like and then like I was in the process of coming up with like I should I should just call him and and buzz him or I got I got to send something to him. And I was kind of thinking the same stuff. Right. Hey, like, OK, it's been five, six days. I got to reach out to this guy <laughs> and at least say something, you know. So I was like, you know, I'm not signing with that team like i want to hear you out like, yeah let's let's have this conversation you're then, like i'm then, actually well, not going to japan i'm actually interested in doing a podcast with you and then what were your thoughts um honestly i thought that it wouldn't happen i was like there's because like i used to be in sales and like you just have to teach yourself that like good things aren't going to happen if you want good things to happen you can't like expect them i'm like conditioned to be like all right this would be awesome but then we got on the phone and you were like yeah, I'm 100% in. Well, it's something I wanted to do. I've been wanting to do something like this for a long time. Well, you're a creative you know, person. People don't know this about you, that you're actually left brain like Johnny Creative. Yeah, I mean, I try to get into a whole bunch of new shit, right? Always trying to learn. Kind of jack of all trades. Not great at really any of them, but I know how to do a lot of shit, mm. right? And this is kind of an arena that I wanted to jump into. And what, what better you know place to jump into it than with you, yeah. you know, and Barstool? It just makes sense. But mostly me. Mostly you. What did you think? Were you like, Carl is pitching me a show? Like, why Carl? Like, Well, so I wasn't sure if you had talked with, you know, Dave or Erica about this kind of stuff yet. And did you mention it to anybody before you came to me? I got clear approval from Hank. Okay, so from Hank. Yeah. Okay, and then so we had. And I was like, but Dave be cool with this, right? Because I'm going to go hard on this. Yeah. And then we had what? About 
two, three weeks kind of back and forth trying to figure things out. And then I had conferences with Erica and with Dave. And then it was kind of off and running from there. Was it easier than you thought it would be? People always say to like, get it done. So, yeah. Well, I was I wasn't sure, you know, but Barstool made it pretty easy to, to get done. You know, we went back and forth a couple of times and then it was like, look, both sides are happy. Let's get the show going. So the first thing people ask me is, are we going to change the name? They're like, starting nine, that's Dallas and Jared's thing. I know, I think we both feel the same way. Right? You want to say it on the count of three? Yeah. One, two, three. Change, change the, name. the name. Yeah, change the name. <laughs> but at some point, and yeah. there's, there's a right way to go about it, you know, and I, th- I think we both feel the same way. It's best to have some out input right Roll from in. from the audience hey Roll throw them. throw things at us tell us tell us what you like you know we we're all we're all ears right we want we want any ideas that that you guys might have and and we'll see we'll see what we come up with i mean we have some ideas of our own but like i said we're open right so i think a good question people are probably thinking is like a guy like you obviously successful you're super fucking rich we saw the house it's incredible like why do you want to do this I I got to stay busy, you know, and I, I love the game of baseball. You know, I like being unfiltered to a certain extent, right, being able to speak your mind. Um, and this is a great pl- platform to do so. And doing it with a guy like you and having the support of Barstool, right, like we've known each other, you know, I wouldn't say personally all that well, but we've known each other for a, for a long time. Yeah, like right? eight, eight years. Right. So we're fairly familiar with each other. Uh, we get along really well, right? That chemistry is there. So from the get-go, I, I knew it was going to be a good show. I also have a good arm. Well, I mean, shit. You still have a little bit, at least. You know, like you were – Colin saw it. Like, it was coming in. Well, tell, we played long toss yesterday. We, like, actually went out yesterday, had, like, a mandate. Yeah. Did some risky All day. risky stuff. Jumped off your – Jumped off the dock. Jumped off the dock, which people think it's not a dock. It's, like, 30 feet in the air. We climbed on top. Almost got in an airplane. Yeah. Obviously yeah. had a bunch of nice meals together. Yeah, we ate good. It was a special day. Oh, I'm glad we had to do that. We're off to a good start. We got, and I'm glad you guys are here in Austin with me. Mm-hmm. I'd love to do the, do this as often as we can. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, primary, primary objective and, and concern for both of us is just to put on a great show. Great show. Talk great baseball and have as interesting of guests as we can. Right. And maybe expose the audience to new information. Right. Or new professions that they may be interested in. Yeah. Lean on your experience. And then, um, you know, I've been talking baseball and Barstool forever. I mean, be honest with you, like I got in to do Cubs stuff under Big Cat was writing free blogs when you were pitching for the Cubs. And like I just came up as an OG Barstool guy, just loving Barstool, always reading the blog, reading the blog when I was at work on the Cube, reading it in college, like. And then having an opportunity to write for Dan and just kind of get my name out there as like a baseball guy and just writing, you know, like this guy's ERA is doing this and that and the trade and here's the prospects. And, you know, we just got, you know, we just traded Feldman for Arietta. Like, you know, what does this mean? What'd you think of that at the time? Uh, I mean, most people are probably like, this is horseshit. I mean, obviously your stuff was good. And yeah. th- that was kind of the name. It was just like, it was discouraging that you, sure, to you a got lot of people. option in 2013 after five starts and being the opening day starter on a pretty good fucking That's team. rough. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it wasn't like the Orioles today. Like, those were teams, they were trying to go out and win baseball games. They were, and I understood the trade, right? Like, they needed another arm. Did you want to leave? I was just in a position where changing a uniform was probably the best, the best option, right? Um, and that happens. It's happened to a lot of guys. You see and you hear that maybe a change of scenery will help them out. And it works. It works a lot. But also, it doesn't necessarily change much in other situations, right? Like you see um, a glass now, right, from, the, from uh, Pittsburgh to Tampa. Unbelievable, right? Would he have blossomed into what he kind of – what he is now? Maybe so. You know, Musgrove, right, from Pittsburgh to San Diego, and there's a bunch of other examples. Mm -hmm. Uh, For me, I think there was a lot of variables in there, but getting uh, into a a new uniform, uh, around a new support system were two of the things that just really helped, you know, kind of put me on that launching pad in the direction of success. 
Yeah, I want to get into like the sense of if you're into like a like okay, well it's a rebuild. Is there less pressure then? Like 2014 when you're pitching for the Cubs, like is there less pressure knowing like hey I can slide in here and kind of rebuild the name or? Well, not necessarily because, you know, I'm coming over there and, yeah, they traded for me, but it's not like they had a ton of money invested in me. If I wasn't pitching well, it was at the point in time where they were just going to send me down and bring somebody else up. I mean, it was that revolving door yeah. of, of multiple prospects and, and some older guys, right? It was a very strange mix of, of players, right? Um, so, no, I wouldn't say there was any less pressure. I think it was just – I had already been through those pressure situations where, like, I, I've already been optioned five or six times. Like you said, I opening day starter, pitch five starts, option. Like, shit wasn't going well. <laughs> so, like, go to Chicago, what's the worst that can happen? Like, I get sent down yeah. to, you know, to Des Moines. Like, okay, so what? So I just – I wasn't worried about shit. I was just out there letting it fly. Still still learning my delivery. Like, I get there in 13, went to AAA for a few starts, get called up, finish the season well, and then in 14, it's like, all right, here we go. Like, I, I feel like I'm starting to figure this shit out. Yeah. You know? Well, hopefully the uh, learning curve for podcasting, like, is there any nerves with this? Be honest. No, I mean, it's a new, it's a new thing for me. But, you know, I've had a mic in my hand. I've been on camera for forever. Uh I've done fucking Chicago Fire, and I did Veep. Granted, I had one line in Veep. You were you had a line in Veep. I had a line Give it in right Veep. now. I said, look, it was no. uh, to to Dreyfus. Yeah, right? okay, I'll be her. I was on the field um, in uniform. Okay, I think I just said, hey, nice to meet you, man. That's Ple- it. Pleasure to meet you. How can you fuck that? up? Pleasure to meet you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. So that was it. And Chicago Fire. Why'd they pick you, Chris Bryant? Why'd they pick you? I think they just, they probably knew, like, the veteran players probably weren't going to be interested in it. Did Scott uh, Boris negotiate, like, a cut for you then? he call Veep and be like, hey, Scott Boris. No, no, I think it was. Hey, like I need 10%. It was a standard, a standard deal. I mean, I didn't, I'm, I'm part of SAG. I still get, like, $12 checks. Get out of here. Yeah, oh, yeah, $12 checks. Yeah, uh, you know, a couple Do times. Do we have anybody year. else at Barcelona that's part of SAG? Are you our first? <clears throat> Maybe so. I, well, I find that that's hard to believe. That's a stage actors guild? They get the screen there? actors, screen right, yeah, yeah. Screen actors guild. It's not that serious, but huge. It's a check, you know? huge accomplishment. And it was fun. Man. So Kevin Heffernan, who plays Farva, and and uh, Super Troopers, right, was in okay, in that no episode. Cream. So he's in that episode. Um, me and Tommy Hunter, we go out with him that night. We go watch my uh, buddy Blake Kane perform at mm-hmm. a place in Fells Point. You know, we drink all the alcohol. We had a beautiful night. Mm-hmm. So that was worth the experience, right? I mean, the $12 checks, that's nice. But hanging out with, with Heffernan, right, just getting that, – that's a good story. Farva's you know, a so top – yeah, Farva's like a top, just quick, like, comedy character of all time. He is. Top ten? He is. And he's me. as funny, right, just kind of behind the scenes, not not trying to put, you know, put the game face on acting. Like, he's just a funny guy. So I'm good glad stash. we did it. I got a good set. What do we call these? It's a dick broom. It's a dick broom, and I meant to say. I think most people know. I think your right side's a little higher than the left. I I fucked up before I came Just down a here. Little bit. I wanted to trim it before I saw you, and I mistrimmed it. And I honestly stood in front of the mirror and was like, "He's gonna fucking say something." And you waited until you waited till like now. To, you can't really tell. I don't know if they'll be able to tell as much. I mean, that's just one. Look, I have part of my shit is all fucked up too because I do my own beard. Which I probably shouldn't. But what do you I, mean? You, of course, you do your own beard. Well, a lot of people go to a barber. Do I don't. I, we don't cut our hair Jake anymore. Jake Arrieta, World Series champion, does his own beard. Do you? Do you go man. get haircuts? Well, I was gonna say this podcast is a huge win for bald jack dudes everywhere. You, do you that get throw haircuts? Gas. Right. If you throw gas and you're bald and you're Jack, this show is for you. Like we are. One hundred percent. And if you have big hair and you want to talk shit to bald guys, God damn, you can tune in. We want your clicks, but fuck you. Well, look, there will be a pill one day we can take with no side effects. We'll get our hair back. Do you take, be honest with me, boner pills, yes, no, have you, do you like them? No, I have before. Yeah, aren't they amazing? They work. Yeah. Yeah, they really work. That's a performance enhancer. A million. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course it is. You, it's I, even, I didn't think it was. If people think it's not even about, it's not even about the... Uh, the stiffness. I wish. Or, what's the scientific word for that? I think it is about that? the stiffness. It's not just that. It's the. It brings How out your best. The primate in you. It can. It can. Yeah, yeah. But you also can't control it. So I played with a guy in the minor leagues, and it was Chad Thal. He made a bet with our manager Tommy Thompson. Don't remember the bet. He lost it, 
and he had to take a Viagra before the game. Mm. He couldn't wear a cup. So he's pitching, like, pitching the seventh or eighth inning, right? He's a left-handed reliever, and he's, fuck, he's just rock hard <laughs> in the game. I think we're in Winston-Salem. You know, but that's the kind of dumb shit we do. Yeah, the minor leagues? Yeah, yeah. Would that stuff ever happen at the big league level? I don't think anybody's taking a Viagra without a cup. That's it's a little risky. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to be on ESPN. You probably hear about that from the players union. Hey, I do have an exercise I want to do with you. Let's do it. We should have a word from our sponsors. Let's do that. It's our first sponsor. It's your first sponsor it ever. Is. It is. And it's Game Time Ticket App. I just got the app. Unbelievable app. I just got it. What's your favorite thing about the Game Time Ticket app? Well, I mean, if I'm getting tickets, I'm going there. Plain and simple. Yeah, it's created by fans for fans. Uh, it's a new ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last-minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows. It's a guarantee lowest price, guys. We're doing guarantee lowest price. What does a guarantee mean to you? It's like you take them out against Pittsburgh, you look at Joe, you go, I guarantee 27 outs. They're guaranteeing lowest price. Best part, you get $20 off. And you got time. Have you ever been to Wrigley and sat in the bleachers? No. Oh, I've been in the bleachers, like, pregame walking around, right. but no. You know obviously I mean. not. You asked me this question yesterday. The best part, you get $20 off your first purchase. Download the Game Time app. Go to Account tab to create a login. Redeem code STARTING9 starting for $20 nine is the redeem off code. your first purchase. Terms apply. Download Game Time. Last-minute tickets. Lowest price. Guaranteed. I mean, if they're guaranteed lowest price, why wouldn't you use it? You know what I'm saying? Okay, let's get to our first uh, – let's get to, like, our first – I want to do a trust exercise. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah. you want to do a trust exercise. Well, it was something I just, you know, I was thinking about. Maybe we need to share some personal information with each other on our first show. Something, you know, maybe people How know or don't know. I mean, as personal as you want to get. I have a couple. I have. I'll give you two. I'll give you two. You uh, go first. So first, first one, it's, it's nothing crazy, but I have two women's names tattooed, one on each foot that are not my... Both of them are not my wife, which is interesting. And people are like, you know, is, is your wife, is Brittany okay with this? Like, what are you doing? Of course. Of course. Would you like me to explain? Yeah, what is going on? So my best friend's wife, my catcher from TCU, his wife is my best friend and my wife's best friend. Her name's Carly. She's on my left foot. We hang out all the time, right? Towards the end of the night when things are kind of slowing down, we usually end up barefoot. Right, so like we're hanging around, feet are on the coffee table, and her and I will just go, you know, foot to foot. Right, she it's like a it's like one of these deals, mm -hmm. but with our feet. So her birthday's March 5th, mine's the 6th. So I'm in spring training in Philly in Clearwater. It's March 4th, it's a day before her birthday. And I'm like, you know, I, was, I drove by a tattoo shop and I was thinking about that, you know, how we do that, you know, with our feet the next day in the morning. I didn't have to go to the field that day, so I went just by this, this bullshit tattoo shop, popped it on the foot. No big deal, right? Love her. She loves me. It's good. You want to hear the other one? Any questions about the first one? Well, I mean, you are the type of guy to put ink on your body for, for a loved one. I like small tattoos. I have a bunch of them, but nothing, no, like, no big, you know, big pieces. I got no, no murals. Not yet. We'll get a matching if this works. I'll do, fuck, we're, let's go. Let's go. The second one? Yeah, but he's... So I have Christina on my right foot. This is John Lackey's wife. She's like my sister. John? Right? John, yes. I don't know how he felt originally about it, but I think he appreciates it now. Like, he knows I love her. She's like my sister. Uh, she was like, you've got Carly's name on, on your foot? Like, when are you getting, when are you getting my name? Just kind of joking, but kind of serious. So I was in New Orleans with a buddy and with two buddies and their wives and my wife. It's like 3.30 in the morning. We're searching for a tattoo shop. Everybody went to bed except me and my buddy Marshall. We're walking around. We, st we go into a bar that is serving drinks. We have a beer or two, I believe. I'm like, hey, is it, can we get ink anywhere? He has no tattoos. He's got two daughters. We go in there. I need Christina on my foot, right? We get Christina put on the foot. It's great. He gets his two daughters on his, le on his left bicep here. One down, one across. I'm, like, telling jokes, fucking with the tattoo artist. And she, two of the letters in his daughter's name are crooked. It's his first tattoo. So I'll wear that one. But it's a good story. So oh, I go home and I show, yeah. So I end up, 
Sean Christina, she loves it. All right, so that's one. It's a, I'm, I think I, it's pretty good. No, you're. I saw him yesterday. Okay. Oh, you I did. I saw him yesterday, yeah, yeah. and I was gonna ask you. You didn't about ask. Him. Here's why I didn't ask you. I thought it would be like uh, these are my dead two relatives sisters that are dead, or it's like yeah. yeah, died of opioid addiction. Yeah. Or like something tragic. It's a little dark. And we're in the middle of like having a good time playing catch. Yeah. You know, going. You know, I don't honestly. I just I didn't want you to like break me down emotionally. No, well, with a personal story. That's now a, it's, it's, it's a John happy, Lackey's wife. It's a happy story. It's Mrs. Lackey. It's Mrs. Lackey and and Mrs. Walker. And you didn't tell John Lackey you were doing this. You were like, "Hey, dude, just so you know, I'm gonna put your old lady's name on my foot." I didn't really tell him. Better no. your foot than your fucking. I mean, he's like my brother. You know, come sure. on. Hank's got a tattoo. You have one. Yeah, it's like a goldfish. Or I something like ink, on his man. Groin. Ink's great. Yeah, yeah I kind of like. Have, I'm it not, feels good. I'm not the type of body type that looks good with ink, and there's a lot of those body types out there. So I just, you know, you guys can stand with me. We'll have a night where you get some ink. Yeah, I mean, we'll probably have. So uh, you hear my other one? Well, I was gonna say I'll, I'll give you, you go. One. Uh, okay, here's something almost nobody knows about me. Uh, I got charged with a felony. Fuck. Wow. When I was 18. I got charged with a felony. Uh, You're charged as an adult. Criminal criminal damage to property on New Year's Eve. I was the first arrest in Champaign County in 2006 um, at like 12.02. 12, 12, the clock strikes. First one booked. And there goes Carl at Cam's in Champaign. I was trying to – everybody's going nuts. And while everybody's like, hey, happy New Year, I was like, oh, this would be funny. I'll take this Miller light sign off the wall and go out the back door – and then I was going to go back to the house we were staying at and, like, plug it in. Yeah. So when we go back for after hours, it was like – it has, like, the huge Cam's Illini, Home of the Drinking Illini, Miller Light sign. So in my head, I'm like, I'm going to fucking – this will be hilarious. Uh-huh. And so I grab it, and it wouldn't come off the wall. And then and then it broke. And then they're like, what are you doing? And then I ran out the front door, and I'm just fucking hauling ass down 6th Street, right? Harold's fucking Carl. And I get – just blindsided by uh i would bang her she's like 35 cop she caught you champagne county sheriff's office maybe somebody she did she fucking beat the shit she beat the shit out of me and i mean in hindsight now that i'm a little weird i kind of liked it but yeah yeah, she got me good and the handcuffs were tight and then i spent the night i spent the night in jail in county jail uh, and then, so they arraign me in the morning, and they're like, all right, yeah, here's the defendant, you know, Barstool Carl, and they read the facts back. I'm like, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> you know, you're open, like, maybe they got the story wrong. Maybe, you know, it was like, maybe I could, like, put this on. Like, no, that wasn't me. And it was just like, yeah, every single thing. It was like they watched it on video happen, then wrote it down. And so, Tough charges, yeah, though, Yeah, tough, no? tough charges. So uh, they t- read the charges. Now, here's the point, though. I'm so dumb. That I don't understand the seriousness of this. I go home, and my dad is a lawyer, but not the type of lawyer that's taking care of this stuff. You know, he's doing, like, government stuff, real right, estate right. closings, if anybody in the mm-hmm. Chicago area, stuff like that. Um, so when you told him, I was like, how'd that go? He's like, I'll go down with you. I, and I'm like, yeah, I break the sign. I get arrested. He's like, uh, he thinks it's like a public intoxication thing. We get in front of the judge. The judge is like, it's a class four felony, criminal damage to property and damage uh, value over $500. We got in the parking lot. We got in the car. He was, he was totally cool. We got in the car. You've never seen a man explode like this. You've Oof. never seen a man. I think I have. A felony. A felony. A fucking felony. I was like, that's really bad, right? He's like, yeah. Felony. So, anyways, it ended up getting pleaded down. Class A misdemeanor it goes on my record. So, when I walked on the baseball team at Illinois, sophomore year, mm-hmm. every time the coach called me over, hey, Mike, can I talk to you for a second? You know, I did like jog over there. I'm like, he found out that I'm fucking, you know, no one ever brought it up at any point if they found Never. out about that. There's no way they let a dude walk on because I was on like double secret, triple probation. I had already gotten a couple drinking tickets in my first semester. I was, I was. Well, Class, fortunately, classic fortunately, it was reduced to a misdemeanor. Yeah, fortunately, and then Class off, a. Expunged, expunged from the record. Expunged off the records. You guys you can go. Google it. You won't find any information. Well, that that's fucking that's gangster, rough. right? Not really, because I thought charge? it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be worse than that. That's fucked up that they charge charged you. They should not have charged What's you with up? a felony. Yeah, right. but we need some fucking street cred on this pod, all right? We yeah, need some street I mean, cred. we can get into that maybe. A, 
a little bit more in depth. Not as everybody's, we move forward. Not everybody's sleeveless. Some of us got to. Some of us got to be bad boys. It's ninety seven out here. It is nice. Have we talked about the setting? Have we talked about? I don't know lake? if you guys can see it. Is it's this just, lake? This is Lake Travis, and it's a little low. We're in, you know, mm-hmm. a semi drought, but what a beautiful place, right? What a beautiful place beautiful to place. celebrate. So you have, so you got a couple ladies' names tattooed on your feet. I do. Which may or may not be a mistake. Doesn't sound like you regret it. Some not people at all. watching no. and listening would. No. Uh, and then obviously my mistake. You is, want to hear the next one? Yeah. Whatever. This one's. It's not how even many, that serious. It's just something I feel like you should know, right? And then that's how my second one is. And yes. we kind of alluded to this yesterday. You told me to stop. You asked if it was about my balls. It's not. Okay. But I wish I've, I've grown I've grown out the bush in a way that is very very precise. Where I'm trying something new. It's you know what a boxwood is, like a bush. It's probably like a, a two and a half by three foot you know bush, but it, it's trimmed real nice. It looks like a box. That's kind of what I'm rocking. But everything else is cleaned up around. Like a flat top. It. Like I'm not a savage. Like you got a little flat top. It's got some it's got some volume. Are you trying to style it? No, not at all. Not at all. It's conditioned, right? But it's kind of, you know, your you buddy gonna, that did the Brazilian, right? Do you want to talk? Yeah, I have a buddy who go, yeah. who, who travels, lives in Outside Chicago, of the city. travels to Philadelphia to have a Brazilian laser, to get his asshole lasered, and he does it. That's a good it, reason. It, he literally does it just to eliminate all risk that he runs into somebody he knows in the process yep. you're like yep you know the lady cleaning his ass turns out that it's you know has lunch with his wife or yeah he just doesn't want well, it's people not like to he's know. doing anything wrong now that said we just told a bunch of people we did but no one knows who he is no one knows who he is no names you're no gonna names. love this guy by the way dude i gotta get a vasectomy too i'm a little nervous Do you, you're still pumping you're still pumping yeah you know so like i feel like it's my duty to do it for my wife after everything she's went through yeah. two c-sections with kids like that is rough shit yeah and you know but i've heard some fucking hilarious stories slightly uncomfortable but one of my buddies was telling me a story of someone he knows that was walking out of the room to go into the room to get on the table and he's just got his t-shirt on no pants nothing walks out of the room and there's like six people in the room and he's like fuck i wish my shirt was a little longer like this is fucking weird you know i mean you just his just shit was out it's out but I mean, they do it however many times a day, so they don't they don't give a shit. No, they don't. But I need I need to set it up. I'm a tick nervous about it. Should I be? Because you got a nice. No, not that. It's just it kind of makes me sick to my stomach thinking about them cutting something down there. So I'm not. I'm you know. You can't yet. I don't have kids yet. You gotta have kids. We're working on it. You gonna but give I'm me some done. good? Well, I mean, what, I advice like advice for kids. I, Fuck, no, you I like had when had them people earlier. say like, "Hey, we're working on it." It's just like, yeah, I'm, I am. I'm coming inside somebody. Like, that's what it means when you say, I'm working on it. But it Isn't just it sounds hilarious. Nice. Like, you, like, I'll look at it's my hilarious. mother-in-law and be like, we're working on it. Well, yeah, yep. You know, you know, like, her, you, you know what that means, though, right? Brittany's parents are going to watch this, and yeah, for sure. I have to we're get cut so I can still come inside your daughter and not get her pregnant. Right? Yeah. Sorry, Greg. Would you tell Greg that? You would I not wouldn't say it like, like that, that to Greg. He's here. He's fucking right down the street. I would not. No, that's fucking unbelievable. That's disrespectful. But it's just Greg. how things work, you know. And I don't. We don't want to have any more kids. A bunch of my friends having kids now. Idiots. Should have had them earlier. Mine are eight and ten. Self sufficient, right? They almost. They can do. You know, take Man, care we're of not themselves. Holding back awesome. on this. Well, it's just. It's just a great thing. I, I would like to have more kids, but I don't want another one in diapers. If I could just make them four or five, I mean, what I'd the have fuck? A Honestly, more. no offense. Yeah. What are you doing with it? Like you're, I I saw the house. Like you're not really. It's not like you're. <laughs> yeah, you just put that. What am one I doing? Kid, what? Yeah, just put the one kid in a no, wing. No, 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 no. Other know, kid over here. And I more power to people that have kids after already having like kids that are past five. But damn, you got to restart that clock. We didn't travel. We didn't do really anything yeah. until we wanted to wait until all the kids the kids were older. Yeah. We can bring them with us. But then if we go back, ah, you get a stroller, a car seat. No, 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 no. Yeah, that does change everything. No, no, no. Well, I mean, that's such a meatball thing for me to say. No shit, it changes everything. But, like, having yeah. to go back in time and do that all over. I feel like that's just one big phase. you got to bite it off. Right. You, yeah, you're either just, like, in that mode where you're just, like. No sleep. You know, handing down clothes. Cleaning up shit and spit up. It's, a, it's, it's fun. You'll love it. You'll um. Love it. 
All right, so I guess we have a couple topics if we want to get into some baseball. I stuff. think we should. I was going to ask you first. We didn't really address this before. Kind of told you why I wanted to do this, right? Yeah. Why a podcast? Why Barstool? I want to ask you why me? Ooh, you know? Yeah. Because there what were other guys. What made you want to reach came. out to me? Oh, other, so where was I on the yeah, list? Yeah, there were other guys that came to mind too. Right. But you remember, I was talking. Well, I look at Hank. He doesn't have a mic, but. Um, he was in the Chicago office and we were doing year end meetings. There was a bunch of turnover, like some leadership left and Hank got promoted to be like the show runner. So if you want to do something at Barstool, like Hank's you talk to Hank, Hank's a guy. And so when Hank got the job, he actually took the time to like reach out to everybody. And like, if you want to have one-on-ones, you know, we'll talk and like, I'll just give you the lay of the land of what I'm going to be doing and give you some ideas. So we had like our one-on-one, which was more just kind of like, where's Barstool Chicago at and all this stuff. And at the end he was like, Hey, baseball wise i know you guys do baseball stuff and you're big into baseball like we are going to be trying to fill the starting nine stuff like if you do have a player and he was adamant that it was like chemistry first he's like we don't it doesn't matter like this and that you know chicklets works because chem- like if you have yeah. a good if you have good chemistry with somebody let me know so i was like i'll i'll kick the tires on some stuff but i i got you know like we'll see but I also understand, like, Barstool's not going to jump up and down if I'm like, hey, here's my buddy who's a bullpen catcher in double A, right? So you got to yeah. have somebody that moves the needle. Sure. Like, Rizzo and I are, are you know, he's like a funny guy. and I Rizzo think, would be great. Yeah, he's like a, yeah. but like active player, you know, New York. He wouldn't, no one would really give a shit. And so I was talking to Hank, was like, just so we're clear, like, I threw a name out there. I don't want to put this name out publicly. It was Johnny Gomes. I was like, what do you think of Johnny Gomes? And it was like, uh, we like Johnny Gomes. Um, you know, do you know? And it's like kind of a foot in the water, like, because I knew Johnny would be like 100%. Dumb. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What do you think of that? He didn't say yes or no. He was just like, eh. And I was like, Jake yeah. Arietta. And he was like, fuck yeah, dude. Like, of course. Like, he's like, Dave's in on that, right? Dave, Dave, that would move the needle for Dave. And Dave's sitting there. It's like, yeah. And he's like, dude, if Jake Arietta's interested, and I was like, all right, let me let me think about this and make some calls. And then I reached out to you, and you were like, I'm moving to fucking Japan. <laughs> and I was like, God, I'm fucking working through this list. You know, there's other All right, we players, get it. There's other people, okay, right? but you but chose the reason, me. Yeah, but the reason that I think you're interesting is that, like, obviously people know, but people don't – I said this at the top. Like, they don't know your left brain creative style. I think there's, like, this side of you that is, that is like, going to become very interesting to people. But the other thing is you're so intense and competitive, and I want this to work. And so, like, having somebody knowing that, like, you're going to give a fuck about this. Like, you're yeah. actually going to yeah. care. Like, you're if I mm-hmm. come to you and I'm like, hey, I think we could do this better, you're not going to take it personally. And if you come to me, yeah. it's just, like, we just want to talk fucking baseball. Like, some of the shit we're going to get into mm-hmm. – and some of these stories and conversations and what I want to pick your brain about, like, I know it's just going to be perfect. And then the last thing is, you know, you're a hot dude. No, I'm just kidding. The workout we did today was unbelievable. I want to lose good. some weight. I want to lose some weight. I want to lose, like, 10, 15 pounds. I want to get the six-pack out again. There's just a couple easy things you can do, right, that might seem difficult, right? You don't have to fucking reinvent the wheel. You can still enjoy yourself and, do, you know, and eat the types of foods you want, right? Just with slight tweaks. It's nothing major. Right? Have you seen my obliques? I saw them at the lake, yes. And they're really not that bad, you know? But little things like after you eat, go for a walk. Don't lay on the fucking couch. Just go for a walk with, with mama, mm-hmm. right? 20 minutes. Just get off your ass, go for a walk. That's it. Start doing that after every meal. Boom. Let's get back to this real quick. All right. right? Let's get to baseball. So two th- well, two things. Oh, no. No, not back. Just I want oh, to back to add two things you said from this. what you were, yeah. what you addressed as far as having me, right? Well, the first one is that it's hard to like really express yourself, your personality, and all the things that incorporate who you are as like a major league player, right? I mean, you you can a little bit like through social media, but it's like our media sessions are are pretty generic. It's kind of always the same. Right, it's like my teammates really know me, right? And my good friends do, and my family. But in this setting, it's like I, I can be myself and we can let a lot more of that out. Right. So that's great. Right. And then what you said about, you know, wanting to work extremely hard and, you know, put something together that people love to listen to, like that's, that's a huge goal for me, and, as well as you. And okay. that's why I think, you know, chemistry is great, right? We both work hard, we love the game. And 
it's just going to be good. There's no, there's no other way around it, Carl. There really isn't, dude. Because we've been sitting around, like, having dinner last night, and how many times did it come up? Like, our crazy fucking producer, Colin, I'm a big Mets fan, being like, save it for the show. Save it yeah, for the show. Yeah, yeah, It's hard to. It is hard to. Yeah, and Hank was saying it's, it's kind of become a, a joke, like, you know, just save it for the show. But it's true, right? Sometimes the reaction might not be as, as genuine. So I just want to put this out there. I'm now challenging Trevor Bauer to come on the show next week or any time. I would like to talk to him. There's so much flying around out there that it'd be nice to hear what he has to say. Because you hear all you hear bullshit from from this side and that side and so on and so forth. So it'd be nice to get him on. We'll, we'll reach out to him. So see if he's interested. If somebody wants to get this to Trevor Bauer, because he's just such a douchebag, and now that this has come up and he's suspended two years, um, he didn't do himself any favors. Like, what do you fucking expect? What do you expect, dude? You shit on Rob Manfred for, like, six years. You go out of your way to build a brand of shit on Rob Manfred. Like, every opportunity you're standing on a soapbox publicly shitting on Rob Manfred. And, like, the first chance Rob Manfred gets to stick it to you, you think he's going to be, like, yeah. oh, it's unfair. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've talked about it, and when he's got the hammer, you know, and what – who know? I don't fucking know if he's if he's guilty of everything or, or not. He claims he's not. I mean, you hope he's not, right? But then again, like you said, all the tweets, all the video posts. Does it matter? His, he's just his, in the his, his TV show or his merchandise. It's just so in your face and always posting from the clubhouse. And I, I've I've never really had a conversation with Trevor Bauer. That's why we want him on the show. I'd like to have him on the show. I want to hear from Trevor. Let's, because, let's talk about it. So get this but out. But being suspended for two years. What would you do? Well, if I'm innocent, you're fighting tooth and nail as hard as you fucking can. Are you going to the union? You go to anybody who can help you. Is the union going to help a guy like Trevor? Or, or? I believe they'll, they'll do what they can. Sure. Sure. I, I don't know all of the power. Obviously, the, the Major League Baseball and the commissioner's office had the power to do this. He's obviously going to appeal. Who knows what comes of it? But what I, there's got to be information out there that we haven't seen and maybe isn't necessarily out in the public, right? But what the media can do to a person that could be innocent is pretty fucked up sometimes, right? Terrifying. Just kind of, well, just pushing stories and narratives that aren't true. So that's possible. So how about this one? Sorry. People, no, people yeah. said you did steroids a lot. Did that bother Fuck you? That. No. It's, it's a compliment. Honestly, wouldn't you view it that way? I think so. Well, and here's the thing. If you just, you look at the stuff, the stuff was always the same. Did, like, would steroids have helped me just, I can put it in a better spot? Or I can pitch, I, I, I'm more effective as a pitcher, right? It, like, I went for, I didn't go from throwing 90 to 100. You know, I was always 92, 97, 98, right, like in, in that stretch. That stuff didn't change. I just figured out how to use it. Yeah, right? but the media sees you come out here. They see ESPN body issue. They see you fucking flexing and stuff and striking people out and yeah. going on this big run. And then it's like, well, pe I think I think the game of baseball is so difficult for people to understand that it's just easier to say, well, then he did steroids. Well, it's easy in, in all different arenas and sports, right? Like if somebody's super successful and somebody doesn't understand the value of – training every single fucking day of your life and a good diet and other you know good health practices then they, that's probably what they'll lean on right but there is a way to get in great shape without steroids right and baseball players typically aren't viewed as being the most in shape athletic guys but look around the league there's some there's some fit fucking dudes like look at these there's some sexy dudes in uniforms right and especially now with the young kids They've been training super hard with all the knowledge and information and nutrition and all these badass training facilities all around the country. Like, it's, it's becoming more of like a fit sport. And there's always been fit guys. Sure. Right, but just, you know, the fact that, like, people throw that out, like, oh, he's, he's really, really good or he's in great shape, got to be on steroids. Right. Fuck off. 
But then, I mean, at the same time, though, it's funny because at that time, the rotation was like, all right, John Lester. I mean, Lackey wasn't there at the time. But just when you think about that Cubs era, like that rotation of like Lackey and Lester and Kyle Hendricks and then those aren't guys you think of like throwing shit around and throwing weight around. And then you're in the corner doing single leg Romanian deadlifts and like fucking, you know, throwing it back to like 270 feet on a fucking line. It's kind of wired that way. Yeah. Kind of wired that way. Those fucking guys got after it. Have you seen the lower half on, on Lester? Lester is a, His he legs looks like are a centaur. Enormous. Enormous. Right. Just different built different. Like, you know, when you see these guys up close, they're yeah. fucking monsters. Right, Lester could barely fit through a door frame, dude. Would he just be loading up squats on off days? I mean, him and Lackey, they they fucking dominated cardio, <laughs> dominated like hours of cardio. Some some days they'd stay stay in there for an hour hour and a half, crushing cardio, shoulder work, squats, like everything. Yeah, doing it all, right? Heavy lifters. And then you come in with like a med ball. I just do. I did some different stuff, right? I had I had different uh, things that I'd incorporate, but I was still doing a lot of the same shit they're doing, you know. Just different, different genetics, also. So there's a segment you wanted to do, and yeah, and, which one? and as we kind of like, you know, as we come back next week, and as we like, you know, obviously the shows following this will have our you know power rankings and get more into like what's going on in the season, all that stuff. But I figured it'd be a nice little teaser, give the you know give the people some some like analysis or some thought process so like you brought up a couple but i guess it'd be best for us as pitchers you know to talk about some filthy stuff talk about some yeah. filth in the league talk about some pitchers that got some fucking nasty nasty stuff so what, what can you take me for a test drive here on the filth of kevin gossman an oh. orioles failed right-handed starter well, fuck. Who, who now just is a fucking he's got filth machine He's he's absolutely dirty, and it all starts with throwing strikes with the fastball, and then when you incorporate strikes with your off-speed pitches, right? Like that's that's the foundation because you'll watch you watch the tape, and it's like split, 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 swing, swing and miss, swing and miss, swing and miss, but then you watch the fastballs, right? It's down and away, it's in at the hands, it's at the top of the strike zone. He's peppering the strike zone, right? He manages his pitch count. Like he, he's gonna, he's a workhorse for that team. He still throws 94 to 98 miles per hour, right? He's very wiry. He's kind of, I would put him in the same category as like a Zach Wheeler. Like really good mobility. The, the hips and shoulder separation is, is off the charts, right? Guys that are just genetically gifted in those regards. And then when you have those tools and you can add the knowledge and just refine your skills it just goes to the next level right like gosman was phenomenal in san francisco and he's picking up right where he left off and and i believe I, stat wise he's probably even better yeah right like watching him pitch the other night it's special shit in the I, there's fucking swings and misses in the strike zone mm -hmm. in the heart of the strike zone yes. he'll get with 84 split right and then he'll come right, right back in the strike zone because you know at, at some level in the big leagues the hitters they're just not – they're tuned. They're not chasing shit as much. Like, yeah, you can get chased, but, like, you have to be able to to attack in the strike zone. You have to. You have to, you know, and, and that that's a great point. This, if you can get swing and miss on balls in the zone, you're a fucking dude. Like, you're a dude. There's no, there's no way around it. Like, most of the time you are establishing the strike zone. You're pitching in or near the strike zone to get guys out with pitches out of the strike zone. Right. That's why strike one is so, so vital. Right. And then that one, one count the difference between and we could we could find it. It's, it, it's different from year to year. Right. But the difference between the average in a one, two count versus a two, one count has got to be like 100 points or, or more. Right. So having the awareness of that. And I don't know if Gosman or some of these elite guys are really focused on on the one, one count. Right. But first pitch strikes. No doubt about it. But like you said, him having the ability to get guys to swing and miss with balls in the zone and the, the differential of his fastball and his split, right? He's got like this – it's something like this, I believe, right? He's got this funky – it's not like a straight change, right? It's, it's something more like that. And he's got his finger – I believe his, the outside of his middle finger kind of pushes off that same. Right. 
and it comes out at 82 to 85 and he throws 97. So to be able to have that same arm action, same arm speed, same presentation to the hitter and the ball's coming out 15 miles an hour slower, that's impressive. Like I, you know, at my peak, I was throwing 94 to 97 and my changeup was 90, right? Full arm speed, it was, you know, his grip creates that separation. So, um, yeah, I mean, more power the, to him for yeah. figuring that out. Because, you know? like, I mean, if, if it were up to you, I, w- I would imagine you would want it to be the, the, the bigger difference, the better. At some point, it becomes a gimmick, but yeah, I, would you go, if you said instead of 8 miles an hour, I'd rather take 15? Probably get more swings and misses. But then again, was, it's like the changeup, you want him to put yeah. the ball in play. Well, I think 8 was good because we, we talked about this, I think, before. Really, all I'm trying to do, there are certain times where you're trying to get swing and miss on the changeup or swing and miss on the curveball or fastball, whatever, right? Runners on second and third, fucking one out. Right, or guy on third base, less than two. Like, yes, you're trying to trying to punch a guy out. But for me, most of the time, I'm trying to get a guy to miss the barrel and put it in play. Get, you know, get out in, in two or three pitches, right? One of the only ways to effectively have an opportunity to get 27 outs is you have to manage that pitch count. Right, especially nowadays, you're not going to see a guy after eight innings with 115 pitches go back out for the ninth, unless he's throwing a no hitter. Well, not necessarily. If he's got 80 pitches in a perfect game, he'll come out. Yeah, I'm gonna read some tweets back to you. Please, violence is the answer. What is wrong with you? Well, I mean, can Colin, you pull that? Can we like flash this tweet on the? You, the context is <laughs> it he's was the just, Mets. You know, the Mets Cardinals. I think they were. Uh, it, it was in St. Louis, right? The the Mets had been, like, notoriously hit a ton, right, in the past. And Buck is a guy, he's going to stick up for his dudes. I love that. You Buck, played for him. Played for Buck. Buck's awesome. I learned a lot of very important, valuable lessons from Mr. Showalter. Uh, and he hasn't aged a bit, by the oh, way. Looks great. Like, what is he doing? Looks great. I, I, I need to talk to him. Let's it's get the him skin. On. The skin we gotta get is him on so... I mean, no, look, put a side-by-side of Buck from 10 years ago and now. The guy has not aged, okay? So... The tweet, right? Um, was it Lopez, Colin? The reliever? Okay. And it really didn't matter who it was. Nolan Arenado just happened to be the guy. Psychopath. He's, he, yeah, he, a screw will go loose, right? But in, imagine yourself in between the lines, right? You're stepping in the box. You've got 96 up and in near your head, right? Like that to me is grounds for potentially having to fight a guy. Plain and simple. Regardless of how many Mets had been hit, if I wasn't a part of that and I just happened to be at the plate and I know you might have to throw at me, if you hit me in the hip or whatever, okay, like I'm still pissed. But if it's near the head, come on, man, I got kids. Like yeah. I'm, I'm gonna, I might have to fight you. And you shouldn't pitch inside if you can't pitch inside. Sure. Yeah. Isn't that? And, that's but, like the. But look, you talk to. Uh, you talked to Nolan Ryan and, you know, his story about bow tie time that he heard from uh, – or what the best pitch in baseball is the bow tie from uh, uh, Satchel, Satchel Page. Page. Satchel Page. Satchel uh, you know, Page. You want me to tell it? Satchel Page. You tell it. I told no, you. No, you, I like retelling baseball stories baseball guys tell me. It's a good story. So the story goes, Nolan Ryan is talking to Satchel Page, mm-hmm. and Satchel Page is telling him. You know, they're just talking about the game. And it's like, what was your favorite pitch? You know, and Satchel Page was like, the, the best pitch you can throw to any hitter. You know, it's the best pitch, you know. And he's like, the bow tie. And Nolan Ryan's like, what's the bow tie? And it's a four-seam fastball in between your neck and your chin, right on the Adam's apple. Yeah. And the fact that, like, but see, here's the Satchel Page could throw that pitch. Yeah. Like, yeah. He, they said he would be able to go out and, like, just throw it into a teacup. Like, like it was like a circus act. I believe it. It's it's an art. Obviously, you have to pitch inside. Most of the old school guys understand this. The new school, the the modern generation of, of pitchers understand that too. If you can't pitch inside, you're going to struggle vi- like immensely at the big league level. Because if a big league hitter knows that he can eliminate the inside part of the plate, his ability to get extended just goes through the roof and exponentially. That's where the power comes from? That's where the power comes from. If I know that a guy is throwing me something in like at least one once in a bat, I can't lean over the plate. I you know, I can't land as heavy on my front foot. Right? So that's kind of what that helps eliminate 
is those guys landing on, the, on that front foot, very comfortable in the box. But you're right. Like, there are guys, a lot of young guys, that won't necessarily throw inside as much. And if you look at that, we could break that down, too. If you look at young guys that are struggling, their ability to throw inside effectively, right? If they do it once or twice a game and say the guy in the box is chirping at them, and then they're like, fuck, I'm not throwing inside anymore. And then they just fucking pepper away, away, away. And then they get, they get shit on. They get shelled, right? At what point were you – because I think ever, I don't think any pitcher wakes up like, or gets out of the womb and just pitches inside. You have to go through a point, I think, in your career where you're like, I have to commit to pitching inside. Now, it can happen yeah. early. Well, when you understand – when you see the, the increase of the ability in the hitters – and it happens, right? Um, it could happen for guys at an early age. You could not see it until, you know, A ball, double A, where it's like, fuck, like, I can't just live down and away. Like, these guys are landing on shit to right center field. Like, I have to make them uncomfortable in here, right? And that doesn't mean drilling them. That just means throwing something that has action moving in towards their body or something where they can't necessarily um, – get extended right like in, there are some really great hitters they can well, a lot of them they can hit that inside pitch pull their hands inside and still find the barrel but it's harder right the chance of damage is a lot less yeah right uh, i i was a decent hitting pitcher and if i knew a guy wasn't throwing me in i could land on that front foot and take a nice hack right does it mean i'm going to hit it and put it in play you know every time no of course not Right, but I was gonna put a decent pass on it. So you think Nolan Arenado was right running on the mound, or you you think? I mean, just... you know, I think that he knew that something was gonna happen, yeah. no doubt about it, and he was probably firing himself up, prepared for the situation. And if it's me, like I don't want the catcher fucking trying to get in my face or putting his hand on me, like I. You know, I kind of, I probably do the same thing. I, I am sick of watching baseball players fucking run at each other and then just stand there. Yeah, I'm I mean, sick of watching relievers run out from the bullpen. You know, the fucking shin guards are flapping. Like at some yeah. level, you guys have to be in the clubhouse afterwards and be like, "Wow, what the fuck was that?" It's embraced in in hockey, right? Two guys going toe to toe, just fucking <laughs> dropping the gloves and going at it. That doesn't happen in baseball. And it gets dangerous when there's a huge pile of guys. Somebody, somebody gets knocked on the ground. Somebody gets stepped on, you know, via a spike or someone hurts their shoulder. Like, that's different. If two guys are standing there just throwing a couple of haymakers, you'll be all right, right? Like, yeah. if you haven't been punched in the face at least once in your life, like, you kind of need that experience. Have you? In the face? Oh, many times. Yeah. Many times. I embraced it. You got any, any gangsters people don't know about? Around the league? Yeah, any guys you're like, I like the – like, there's that – the Ryan guy up in, in Minnesota looks to be a fucking – Oh, gangster. Oh, yeah. oh, I thought you meant, like, like tough guy. Gangster. Oh, fucking Joe Ryan? He looks good he's to nasty. start the year. I'm telling you, man. He's, he's kind of – he kind of reminds me a little bit – a lot of reasons that I really like this kid. Uh, for one, I saw him in Minnesota wearing this fucking, like, half turtleneck but short sleeve. Yes, kind of dude. Thing. I – that is – I saw, I was like, why did I not think to do the fucking... And I thought, I thought it was something he wore every game. It's not. No, it's I'm, I'm a little it's disappointed. Cold. But it's just like a two-inch white, uh, white collar, no sleeves. Yeah. It's fine. He's got a nice dick broom. Nice little dick broom. He's got a great delivery. He kind of reminds me of Aaron Noll a little bit. And he's not this, like, overpowering flamethrower. He can fucking pitch. He locates, right? And he's not scared. He's throwing in. He's throwing to all four quadrants of the, of the zone, He's polished, and he's 25 years old. Big-time guy. Yeah. And he's one of the reasons Minnesota's leading that division. And I love I love the emergence of, like, that age, that time. You know, like the 25, 26-year-olds that come up and, and, you know, they pitch well in college. Or, like, not, necessar not necessarily the, the flamethrower prospects, like, oh, I can't wait to see this guy strike everybody out. But there's yeah. dudes that fly under the radar, like not top 100 guys, that yeah. then get to the big leagues and know how to carve. Like, Kyle Hendricks, obviously – this isn't yeah, going to be a fucking a Cubs podcast, it's which is breed. easy to go to. Yeah. But, like, to me, a guy that just fucking pitches 88, 90 with a change and some sink and just, goes yeah. like, leaves it on a field. It's impossible. No, well, it would, would have been impossible for me. That's just not the kind of guy I was. I played catch with you yesterday. I can, I, you can't even – you literally can't even play catch with someone. I can't throw it slow. You just throw 96. No, I don't Could you pitch hard. right now? I could probably I would need a little bit of time to get ready. I could, but like how many know, outs heard, could you get? It depends. I don't know. I could get I could get quite a few outs. But I like I told Big Cat right on PMT, 
I lost feel for my my arm in space. Sounds weird, but at like at release, my shit was all over the place. And I, I hated that. I, I had to go out there for a season and a half like that, trying to make it work, not being able to fucking throw anything other than a fastball in the strike zone. It's like, this sucks. I'm making myself look like an asshole. I don't want to pitch this way for my teammates. I know the fans fucking hate it. I hated it, right? So it was a frustrating situation. But, yeah, to be able to still have, like, the velocity but just lose feel for, like, that arm slot is tough, but it is what it is. You yeah. know? Do you miss hitting? I'm glad they have the DH in both leagues because it's necessary, right? But yeah, of course I miss hitting, right? Was that was that like a fun part of? Earlier on, yes. Earlier on, yes. Like, like when you first got with, traded with over, Chicago, like, oh, fuck, you it was fucking get to awesome because you know, like we got to hit BP on the field every fucking day. We're just trying to hit homers. One day, me and Samarja bought uh, we bought metal bats off fucking eBay. We got like the old Air Attacks and the Omahas. And we're hitting balls on top of the fucking the rooftop yeah. across it. Where fucking Glen Allen Hill has hit one before. Uh, yeah. I, I, wood bats are way better. My son asked me, he's like, hey, is it how much further would you hit with a metal bat? I'm like, no. I, th- I think good, like a really good wood bat compared to the college bats now. A wood bat's probably better. How much better are the wood bats you guys are playing with? Compared to like what like anybody could get. Sporting goods, you oh, get a little, little slower I mean, I'd have rack. to ask some guys, but like the the bats that like Schwarber, or like Harper, or you know, these guys are the using. Maruchis. Dude, so it's like in so one of these guys can correct me if I'm wrong. Let's get let's get one of the boys on. Let's ask them. But I think the more space in between the grains, the hard, the better the wood. Oh, you see what I'm saying? Well, your Barry Bonds was using maple. Do you remember the maple? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. baseball where yeah. it was like. The bats yeah. don't break, but if they do break, like watch out, the shard's gonna go through your chest. Remember yeah. when Chris Coglin got stabbed? No, that was No, that wasn't Chris Coglin. Who got fucking stabbed? Do you remember? A dude got stabbed uh like fucking right here. On third base. It wasn't Coglin. Oh, up. whoa, whoa, maybe he fucking Dude, did. it was Coglin. But there was another guy other than that that did get stabbed. I can't I can't fucking remember who it was. Okay, uh, anyway. Let's see if Wood. let's see if Colin come out with it. Tyler Colvin. Tyler Col- Oh, so that was before I – it was Chicago, right? Tyler Colvin. Before I got there. Tyler Colvin. Tyler Colvin, first rounder out of Clemson. He, he had like a, a fifth-round draft grade on him, and uh, the Cubs drafted him because he was uh, – they signed him for like 800 grand because they were like, oh, we'll draft him the first round. He was like our 13th overall pick, and they gave him like yeah. 800 grand. Yeah. That's tough, man. They used to, I hate it when they do that. You own the record for biggest signing bonus in, after the fifth round, I think. Yeah, or we you had a, did we had a time or something. We had a pre-draft deal set up, probably illegal. I don't know. Like, I mean, it shit, ha- it shit happens all the time. What do you though. mean illegal? They call like they call well, your dad. We had or- this, it was like already agreed upon with the Orioles. You know, I got a call from the Nationals in like the second supplemental or second round. I didn't even tell Scott Boris this. I think I told him after the fact. They called me, "Hey, will you sign for 800 Because I was pissed. I was slotted to potentially go like to sixteen or seventeen to the Rangers. You know, and you hear all this draft high, hype, you're getting fucking excited. So a first round goes by, I'm pissed. I have people over the house, this sucks, you know. Friends and family, oh, great. You didn't get picked in the first round, you fucking stink. The Nationals call me, we sign for 800, I told them not to draft me, right? So I get a call, the Orioles had a pick in the first round, which was Matt Wieters. Mm-hmm. Then they had a second round pick, which is Tim Bascom out of... Uh, South Florida, I believe. Me and him had a, an absolute fucking showdown in college. I think it was a one nothing game. So they picked him in the second round and said, we don't pick again until the fifth. If you aren't picked, we're taking you. We'll sign you for 1.1. 1. 1. So it worked out. It worked out. Sign late. Had to sign late because the deal had to go through, like, the commissioner's office, like a little backdoor deal or whatever. Went straight to the fall league, threw 16 scoreless out of the bullpen, won a ring with the Phoenix Desert Dogs. and Let's know. go, Desert Dogs. Dude, it's a beautiful ring. Yeah, fucking awesome. Yeah, nah, it's all right. I mean, we got to get – okay. It's like an onyx I, they give Would they give you fucking you rings ring. for the Arizona league? Ring. And then, so I drove back. My dad flew out. He watched a championship game. Shout out, Miss Area. And he's like, you know, I'm going to you know, fly up there. I'm going to drive home with you. I'm going to help you drive. Motherfucker slept like the whole way. You know, dads love doing that though, flying somewhere and then driving with you. My dad's done that with me a bunch. I, I mean, mind. not even a talking bullshit. Well, you yeah, just no, we fell talking asleep. bullshit. He wouldn't let no, me. No, I'm dri- saying my dad. He wouldn't let me drive. My old man would be like, oh, "Yeah, hey, it's your turn to drive." I drive for a half hour and then he would just get anxious. No, I, lo- I love the drive. I love the long drives. Yeah. Well, it's just a time to to think, to ponder. And going 90 down, you know, 10 or whatever, it's a beautiful thing. You had me. I was thinking about something there. Well, 
You had something else? I had something else. And well, I'm so look, we talked it. about the uh, the violence is the answer. Yeah, sometimes. yeah, okay, the other one. The other and one. And then is, we kind of got into the Kershaw thing. Yeah, w- are you more mad about... I'm just mad for, about the whole situation. Who's more disrespected? Nah, it's not disrespected. It's not necessarily but, I mean, disrespected. But it's the just other a guy, fucking unfortunate situation that we didn't get to see Kershaw potentially throw a fucking perfect game because... First start, it might be a little cold in Minnesota. Like, he had some, like, maybe some injury stuff. And no, man. Like, sometimes you just got to you gotta be a little bit more aggressive. You All know? Right, so and, the, and the fact that, like, you think that if you run him out there, like, he's going to get hurt. Like, no. That's that's not necessarily the case. But do you think he was mad? Do you think it was Dave Roberts? Do you think his front office? Kirsch is funny? such a good dude that... I think, you know, behind the behind the scenes, like, yeah, I, I do think he was pissed. Is and he I think, too nice? No, that's just who he is. He's just you a know, regular. I mean, he's, he's, like, best friends, I believe, with one of my good friends, Will Skel- yeah. Skelton. Shout out to Will Skelton. Shout out to Will. Right? Um, subscribe to the subscribe Highland to Park. The- Highland Park guys, collared shirts, vest, tie, the whole thing, you know. Uh, but, yeah, it just sucks. I, I, everybody wanted to see that. His teammates were probably pissed. But you're going you're gonna to stick up for Roberts. You know, that's what good players and good teammates do. I fucking hated it. I want to see him throw a perfect game. If he's at 100, different story. He wouldn't have even gotten to 100 because of the situation being his first start, yada, yada. But, man, it's 80 pitches. If he goes out there and he gives up a hit the first guy, then he comes out of the game. Yeah. Slider usage is through the roof this year. I thought it was up to over 50 Slider and cutter. Yeah. He just – he's just oh, – Oh, with Kershaw. With and Kershaw. It's, and it's very good. And it's very good. And he didn't have it when he got in the league. It's fastball, oh, curveball. And they just It's just like each year he just keeps adding a little bit. Yeah. Now, a testament because when you talk about like – like he's a generational best pitcher of my lifetime that I've seen over the – since he's been in the, For sure. in the big leagues. For sure. Now, Scherzer might be more of like that big game dog foaming at the mouth. And maybe when Strasburg was like on at his most elite, you know, you'd be like, holy fuck, that stuff's unhittable. But yeah. Kershaw forever. And it's been so cool to see him evolve. Like he's in the fourth quarter of his career. He's still pitching at the top and he's a completely different person than he was. He is. And it's a little different. Like Verlander's still doing it, pumping 98, what? still throwing filthy hammers. But like, I, it's just so cool to see Kershaw like come in as a flamethrower and then just kind of gradually move into this like crafty 92 guy. I love it. And he's always been, he was a guy with command, pitchability. He understands how to, to use his stuff. Right, so he wasn't a guy that just blew it by everyone. He had that he had that great velocity, but he still he still moved around. He commanded the ball. He pitches he pitched to all parts of the zone. So when a guy like that who understands already how to use all of his stuff loses a little bit of velocity, like he's not affected near as much, right? But when you see like these young guys that can only pitch with ninety five plus, like I've told a lot of young pitchers that they currently have, what happens when you when you only have ninety two? If you can't command the baseball, you're a bartender. You're not gonna you're not gonna play very long, yeah. right? So that's why you know he's left-handed. He's got some deception. He's got the arm angle. He's got that beautiful curveball. He's got crispness on his fastball, and he's he throws that fucking nice fucking slider that's tight and hard to pick pick up until the very end, right? You've already decided to swing, right? It's good shit. It's good fucking shit. What if I what if I made you walk somebody with the bases loaded? I'm the manager. You're pitching. You look in the dugout. I'm like, no, 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 fucking. I just look at the up. I'm like, well, you saw. You, I mean, you saw Trout's reaction too in center field, right? He's he's he looks at first, at second, at third. He's like, the fuck are we doing? And fuck, who doesn't like Joe Madden? We all like Joe Madden, but I I can't I can't deal with that. I can't deal with that because it's April. You have a young guy on the mound. I believe it was a rookie. What are you telling? Like, what are you doing for that guy's confidence? What are you saying to him? Like, hey, you're horse shit. I'd rather walk a run in than let you give up a grand slam. No. How do you get to the big? Li- I it's for me. I'd be like, how can you be good enough to get to that point? You're that good to get to that point, and then, but you're not good enough to pitch to this hitter. There was some sort of algorithm that was gone over, or some sort of outcome that they 
They checked out and they concluded that this is the best option for our team to, for our win probability to be where we like it, or whatever the case is. And they gave up a five spot at some point in that game, and then they turned around and scored five in the next inning or the inning shortly after that. And so they, they won the game, and, and so then it looks right. great. Like, oh, it worked out. No, it didn't. Joe. It didn't work out Joe's for the a future. genius. And Joe, right. so this is a pro Joe Man podcast. He's obviously fucking sweet. We should come up with our own uh, statistics. I would like, so there's Some advanced. Do you like this, Hank? Like, if we have, we should come up with our own and use the computers, too. I'm not saying just, like, phony baloney ones. Like, I'll get a computer out. <laughs> I have one. And we'll do, and you and I will sit down. We'll put together a formula. And I want to, we'll basically put a metric on the biggest bags. What's a bag? It's a nutsack. Yeah. 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 Guys with the guys with the biggest nuts. And I think that's that's a segment that, that plays segment. really well. Um, there's a lot to that. We have a lot of stuff right? to talk about. It's going to be a hell of a fucking t-shirt, too. Yeah. It's going to be a hell of a show. It's going to be a hell of a show. This is your first Sparsel Sports podcast. Are we done? No, I don't know. Okay. Do you want to be done? I mean, not, not really, but I feel like you were... Do you want to be You're done? You're kind of making it go that way. But look, I'm taking the. I'm just like whether we are or the, not. Playing around. What do you want? To, like, like whether we are or not. It's your show. I've loved spending it's, time with you. No, it's not. Let's keep you want going. to move here? I will move to Austin, Texas, if this goes well. I have some room in the house. Look, I'm, I'm really looking forward to to breaking this stuff down. How do you feel about? I gotta ask you about the Cubs. You know, you got a fucking Cubs hat on right now. Just you know, tell me your thoughts. I'm popping the top. Well, just tell actually. me tell me your thoughts on the team. I will too. What do you think about the boys? I've got some thoughts. I've got some thoughts on all the teams. We can get into it more, you know, yeah, as, as we I've, as we keep I'm, as we keep going. I'm delighted that you're I'm delighted that you want to that you actually want to have this conversation right now. I want to hear your thoughts on on the Cubs. So like in any year, I think you should go into it and be like have some reasonable expectations. Like, is this, is this worth me, like, really getting worked up about? Or is this something I want to have some fun with? Or, like, the rebuilding year, that was also fun because you knew there were going to be players coming up and you're bookmarking all the minor league stats. And, like, it's just diff- – each year is kind of its own different story, I guess, is where I kind of want to start. Yeah. And, like, this year's story to me is, you know, we got to say goodbye to, like – we got to get over shit. Like, last year was the worst. I'll take – I'll take – I'll take 100 loss season after 100 loss season after 100 loss season before I do one more of these fucking goodbye tours. Like having like like having a se- all right, we're going to try like It was easier the second time I seen your fucking article. It was easier. Which is it's t- 100%. It was fucking easier. And it's easier. totally fine. I but, get it. But 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 Rizzo and KB tough, and tough, Javi tough. and fucking all this yeah. all these and then but at the same time you're still watching Kyle Hendricks go out and pitch. Yeah, and it's like Jason Hayward's, you know, doing everything he can, and you know he's doing everything he can. There's no, it's not like that guy's sleeping in and it's like, well, he's not good because he doesn't give a fuck. Like no, that guy's a, just out there grinding. He's a grinder. You know, so I'm just trying to find the stuff I like this season. I want to watch Nick Madrigal play as much as he can. I do too. <laughs> you know, I'm not really. I don't love Nico Horner as an everyday shortstop in the big leagues. If we're being honest, I just don't. But I don't know yet. But I don't know yet. So like, yeah, he could end up being something. I'm I'm looking at him being like, I I don't know if he's you know maybe he should go play center field. They're in a position where they have to they have to get extended looks at certain guys. Right. That's that's the only that's the only option wisdom? I feel like they have like with wisdom? certain guys. I like Wisdom. He's got a he's got a pure like power hitting swing. So he could hit forty jacks. Yeah, yeah. The the ability is there to hit forty home runs. He could strike sure. out one hundred and fifty times in the process. He, he could. could play below average he could. defense at third base. So you those have aren't to, my decisions if the front office wants that. But I I you've like roll, him. You've rolled the dice with him. You're kind of you're pretty much committed to him, which is good. You know, I think that um, I think that he could be an everyday player for him into the future. You just don't know, but there's other guys that you have to give like this year too. And I'm not saying they're not trying to win. Of course they're trying to win, but are you going to compete with Milwaukee and St. Louis? No. Fuck no. You're not. I mean, I mean, you want to be in a position in the second half where like maybe if they win, you know, in 2015 when you guys got super hot in August, like, I mean, that surprised everybody. Probably you guys too. Yeah. We were like, holy fuck, now we're in the wild card spot. And I don't think that's going to happen with this team, but at least being comp- – if you're – you know, if we could be seven, eight games back in, in the second half with, you know, with a little bit of life and Brendan Davis comes up and he's fucking good and Justin Steele takes a step forward with like his demeanor a lot. Yeah. 
No, he's know, he's great. Or yeah. Keegan Thompson's another. How often do you see a reliever come out and do three, four innings in a, in a stint and just fucking gas? I dudes, think he I fastball think, curve. I'd like to see him as a starter, and I know they've they've kind of used certain guys as kind of an opener for an inning, inning inning and two thirds or something. The last, you know, lighter started, and now he's coming out of the pen. You know, Stroman's you know, he's been kind of up and down a little bit as far as his performance. Portnoy bet on lighter. Yeah. Thinking that it was like the fucking lighter, lighter, like it was Jack Lighter. Oh Jesus! And he was like, "Who? Well, who, he, yeah, he thought he thought it was like the top pick from. Oh last yeah, year. from for, yeah for the Rangers. How's right? this guy yeah. a dog? Yeah. Right? Is no. am I getting this right? No, it's Mark well, Lighter Jr. It's the different different right, Lighter. Right. Jack Lighter will be up soon. Jack Lighter. He's in Double A, right? I got one for him. Oh, he's I'm got at a the debut this year. Series last year. I'm getting coffee at Starbucks. L Lighter's in front of me. And I'm just like, I got to say it. It's Al Leiter. I'm a baseball. I can't help myself. I'm like, you're Al Leiter, right? He's like, yeah, yeah, I am. I'm like, hey, I work for Barstool. You know, I cover baseball. He's like, perfect. Let's sit down. I'm like, what? Yeah. He's like, let's just sit down. You like baseball? I was like, we talked for 45 minutes. We, he, he was watching my mechanics. He was, we were standing up. He was showing me my <laughs> fucking shoulders. He's, He's like, watching you your mechanics, play. your video from what? I, I'll show you my video. No, no, no. I, when I played in college. No need. I have a I have a video of me. It's a famous gif of me throwing oh. 92, and it's not really it's 92. Oh. Okay. So I showed it to him. We were going through our mechanics, and uh, and then we talked all about his son. And he was like, "All right, I gotta go." I'm like, "I'll see you later." And he just left me in Starbucks. And I yeah. was like, "I just did. I was like 45 minutes an hour on my mechanics with Al Leiter." Yeah. It was a great moment, and I want to shout out Al Leiter. He's a MLB. I I would sit around and watch him talk MLB Network, and then he's got me with my and Al Leiter. He's got big. He's he's got a huge back. I've never stood next to him. Huge, really, way bigger than you'd think. Okay. I mean, just fucking rock solid. Al Leiter, probably. I've never, I've never really stood next if to him. If man. he came in here and said he was a retired Olympic champion in the 200 meter breaststroke, you I mean, it. just broad. You believe it? Just huge. Well, fuck. So, well, anyways, it wasn't. So, Mark Leiter Jr. The Cubs pitching staff is. is look, I. It's not great. There's no dominance, right? There's no, I think there's no your, dominant arms in, in there. I mean, there's there's some good guys in the in the rotation, right? But, you know, they don't. Smiley. He's all right. Yeah, I mean, they no, need, don't like they them. don't have like a. They don't have like a young guy like a Urias who's just like ready to dominate, right? And there's not many of those guys, but that's what they. They need, frankly, if they wanted to compete with, you know, the three guys that they got to face in Milwaukee or some of the pitching they got to face in St. Louis, they just need they need more of a dominant presence on the mound. The you Milwaukee – here, you take my phone. The Milwaukee pitching staff from Peralta – silly. Burns and, and Woodruff. And Woodruff, yeah. You, were you guys – is it? Is, do you think, like, a good pitching staff – you just think, like, the – I think the three guys in Atlanta, like Smoltz and Glavin and fucking Maddox going out and playing golf and eating steak and playing grab ass and stuff, like, is that a thing? Are most rotation starting pitchers, are, is like, do you think these guys are, like, tight hanging out? I know that Woodruff plays golf. Yeah. Uh, we were supposed to play together uh, last year. Did, ended up not working out. I don't know if Corbin plays. I'd like to find out. I would bet that Peralta's not a golfer. Yeah. You know? But – a lot of guys do get out and play. If you're a starter, you got to play golf. Yeah. You have to play golf. Yeah. You know? So, and that's. Like, are they the type of guys you see where, like, that's a unit, that's a group, that's a staff, or is yeah. it like, like, that's what I'm saying with the Braves. You looked at it, it was like, you just see those guys putting scout reports together. You just see those guys sitting on the planes together talking yeah. about lineups and well, stuff. Well, you, you, you almost have to do that kind of stuff together because why, why wouldn't you? It just makes, because if, if from, from my perspective, if I see it a certain way and Kyle sees it a different way, but his way could help me or Lester or, you know, Woodruff and yeah. and Burns are sitting there, like, chewing the fat in the dugout watching Peralta pitch, like, that's that's the opportunity to learn something you might not have picked up, right? So whether you're on the plane, you're in the hotel, yeah. like, at the hotel bar having a couple of drinks, yeah. we're always talking about that kind of shit. Or whether you're on the golf course making bogeys, you're, fucking, you're talking about pitching. And Brandon Woodruff's like, yeah, I just throw 66% fastballs. I've never seen anybody throw a four-seam fastball. And we talked, like, how you just went full sinker. That guy's yeah. just just fucking four-seam gas. Just fucking I'd be, challenging we, we should find out, like, the drop of his fastball, right? It's like how much decline your fastball has, right? Because if the more plane it can stay on, like, it it's, seems impossible to stay on top of it. I know there's a reliever for, uh, for the Orioles. Big, I think he's a Latin guy. Throws like a hundred, 
right? Yeah. But I think the drop on his on his four seams like four or five inches, which is ridiculous. So it's it like just, a break out of hand. Ball. It just like stays, right? Stays there. So I'm sure Woodruff is is similar, right? In that regard, doesn't doesn't drop very much. It just kind of has that natural ride on it, and it's hard to it's hard to square up. Can you pitch with angle if you're if you have rise on your fastball? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you want – you're like, trying to I'm throw angle, downhill. Like, I want to throw downhill. Like, Tim Lincecum is a yeah. perfect example of somebody who always – and a small guy, too. I mean, right. the taller you are, obviously, the easier. But when you're throwing downhill, the ball looks smaller. It's harder to, like, square up. You have to change your eye level, too, right? Like, a guy that throws on, like, the same plane, right, and not intentionally because of that ride – if you throw if you throw on that same plane, like the hitter doesn't necessarily have to change his eye level very much. Right? But a guy that throws from way up here and can locate pretty you know, consistently at the bottom of the strike zone, you're kinda of, you're going from that arm slot to down towards the bottom of the strike zone, it changes it kinda of fucks with your eyes a little bit. So a lot harder to square up. So that's why like shorter pitchers that kinda of push the ball, those guys get lit up. Easier to see. Make sense? I don't like making fun of short guys, but you're right. Well, I mean, it's just it's just a fact. Well, so you're six Shorter. two. I'm six one. Four and a half. You're not six four and a half. Four and a half, man. You got any dark horses? We got the teams out. Let's go. What do we well, got? Dark horses. I got I got teams that have really surprised me. I mean, obviously, Milwa- uh, Milwaukee is. I didn't expect them to be quite as good as they play. I knew they were going to be good, right? Um, I just the hate Mets. Milwaukee's lineup. I just always will hate Milwaukee's lineup. It just they're always going to be good. At, they're just like the Oakland Athletics of the early two thousands. Of just they're so good to dominate through a one sixty two, and then they're going to find themselves in a five though. game. They're going to be in a five mm-hmm. game series against the Dodgers or something. They're going to be like, how the fuck is Andrew McCutcheon at your deal? Fuck, he's still doing his thing though. I know he's, he's still he's, doing his thing. I mean, huge Kutch fan. Got to get him on the show. Love Kutch. He's a funny fucking dude. Got to get him I on. Think sneaky, sneaky, funny. I think he's high school, your age or mine. He was like he's, a high school 13th or 13th. He's, probably, 13th he's 03 or 04. Okay. Right, so he's right around me. Yeah, 36. But, and look, I'm not surprised Milwaukee's playing as well as they are. I, I didn't necessarily think they'd be doing this with the rotation and, the, and you know, their bullpen. And they can hit. That, that's just, you know, bullpen – Defense and timely hitting. If you can hit with runners in scoring position, timely like hitting, we talked about, them. timely I hitting. Mean, that's, like, that's always been the thing with baseball. But the the teams that hit with runners in scoring position, that's that's how you win games, especially you know down the stretch, right? In in big situations. Do you believe in the clutch gene, or like uh, yeah, that being a yeah, thing? Yeah, like yeah, that guy's clutch. Guy, that guys, guys that not clutch. Guys that are not phased by the big moment, or you know, two outs. Guy at second base, we need to get that run in. We need a stat for that. We need a stat for that. And yeah, yeah. And there's a, there's a few other things we'll talk about that we need to we need to uh, keep track of. I'm I'm slightly surprised at the Mets how well they pitched. Does that bother you, Colin? <laughs> Colin says no. It's, it's a good thing, you know. I mean, obviously, I'm a big fan of uh, what Buck brings to the table for that team. Uh, the way that McGill has filled in for for Degrom is exceptional. I mean, you're not taking him out of the rotation. I mean, there's no question about that. He's big like, he's, fuck. And he's like 94 to 97, 98. I didn't – I had no idea. And they got they got a good lineup. Lindor's swinging the bat, right? They they can play. Um, Pete Dodgers, Alonso. Yeah, I mean. Pete, well, yeah, Pete Alonso will do his thing. Um, guys like McGill and Nemo, they're invaluable to the lineup because they know the strike zone. They work at bats. The other night I saw, um, you know, McNeil – Looking to bunt because the shift's on. Just trying to trying to get on first base. No matter what he's got to do, he ends up drawing a walk, right? I don't remember the outcome, but just seeing seeing the, the ability and the understanding and the awareness in that situation to try and make something happen for the team. So I love that. And then the Grom comes back. Who knows? Our, uh, yeah, just we need him healthy. Our producer wants to put him in the bullpen. Excuse me? Yeah. He wants to put him in the bullpen. Well, no. Look, so we're going to explain this next week. You're not. We're you're gonna probably not going to do that. You're not going un- unless you take. unless you like really schedule his appearances. It, you you'd have to structure his appearances like spring training, and you're not going to do that during the season. But if the think. rotation's good enough, what if he wants to? Well, there's there's got to be somebody you can take out of the rotation. We're and, talking about literally you're talking like about one of the one greatest, of the best, guy, best arms ever. You're gonna. T- it doesn't matter. You're gonna take somebody out. Do you think people will remember him for being injured or being amazing? It depends on how 
how long he's injured for, right? Like he's had some time on the shelf and he wants to be healthy. There's no doubt about that. If his, if his injuries uh, are persistent, if they continue for a certain period of time, then that becomes part of the conversation, unfortunately. But like I said, when he's, when he's on, he threw against us um, last year, the year before. It was last year. He punched out 9 of 10, and then he came out in like the fourth inning or fifth inning of, with shoulder tightness. I'm like, fuck. Of course, I don't, I don't want to lose the game, but I want to watch that guy pitch. You know, he punched out 9 of 10 or some <laughs> shit. Like, unbelievable. Right, um, man. You know, I, what do you think that is the most difficult division in baseball right now, or the best division? I mean, you're you're either in the NL East or the NL West, but the AL East is everybody loves sucking the AL East. NL East? You say NL East or NL West? I said the NL East is obviously you know with the Braves and the Phillies should come back, and the Mets are really good right now. The Nats are trash though. The Marlins are sneaky, fucking underrated, man. And Miami's a tough place oh, hey, to play. Their rotation's sick, but like, how can you? Let's just, talk about Lazardo for a second. I mean, what is that? I don't know. He's gonna win a Cy Young someday. You think so? Man, have you seen his stuff? No. You gotta check him out. Tell man. me about his I, stuff. I, I saw no, him pitch. I've seen his stuff. I want you to give me this guy. Well, no, I, I saw him play. pitch. I saw him pitch against <laughs> Anaheim, and it was I think it was Sandoval, Sandoval Lazardo. I believe was a matchup. Really phenomenal matchup. It's nice to see when two lefties go out there with plus to like elite stuff, right, that can uh they can use three three or more pitches to get guys out. You know, but Lazardo was mid to upper nineties. Nasty slider, unbelievable feel for a change up, right? And an explos an explosive delivery. Right? Like he's bringing all of his energy and all of his effort right at you. Right? He's got a good feel for it. It's repeatable and very impressive. And then Sandoval a, a tick less, right, as far as velocity goes. But the feel for the changeup is is mm. unbelievable. He, would you say he struggled a little bit against the White Sox? I mean, just, it, it was know, just like a, wasn't. It, but those are tough circumstances for a guy like that to pitch in because it's a day game and it's fucking forty degrees and it's windy. He and still it's just looked like, really good at times. Sure, at times he did, like, yeah. and he's going against. I think Cease was on the other side. Cease was on the other side. He, yeah. What he punched out ten or eleven. He's so fucking. He's good. really good, and the Cubs he's had him so too. So fucking good. Yeah. You know, and he's a short guy who pitches, he, who's got what you're talking about, the yeah. spin, it's not flat. I mean, it Dick jumps Broom out. Guy. And he, great Dick Broom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you've got shit like him, you can you can wear it proudly, right? Yeah, because you can, it doesn't, like, what are you going to say to a guy who's got 99 with a fucking plus plus? That's, no. a, that's, a, that's a plus plus hammer. It's really good, yeah. And it, it's, it's a true 12-6. Like, it's not, it's not going side to side, right? It's not a 1-7. It's going, it's going straight down. Who else? There's not many of those. Who else? Who's got that? Uh, just Tom like the Gordon. Straight, the straight downer? Who those are name? nasty. Kershaw, obviously. Kershaw's got it because you don't know where to where to swing at. You're not sure where it's where it's going to finish breaking, right? Like it, it could stay elevated, right, which you're hoping, but then it just, like, keeps – it's almost like the RPMs just keep going. I think the curveball made a full. I think the curveball made a full comeback. Pitching at the top of the zone and throwing a curveball mm. made a full come. Dude, slider, fastball you have slider, to, you fastball have to slider have, from 03 to like 2016 was like, what do you got? Every pitch is like think, fastball I think, slider. I think guys have incorporated the cutter now, maybe a little bit more than yeah. you than you think. Well, I think I mean, there's I way like more the cutters cut. in the game. I like the cutter. But you can. Everybody just, has a cutter though. Everybody has a cutter. Not a good one. Not a. Everybody's working on one. Knuckleball when I play catch too. I don't like. I don't. I'm saying pitching at the top of the zone is now, like it was a thing where you like, yeah, you got to do it. Now it's like you better be pitching. At the if top you can of the really zone. do do it well and consistently and not miss, like down, because those are homers if you do right. Unless you have like that super high in velocity. But I've always said, and I told guys this, guys this for a long time, you still have to be able to pitch down and away. I saw too many young guys that had, didn't have the ability to pitch down and away that were being taught to pitch up in the zone with a fastball and and below the zone with a curveball. What if you're not able to command this one up here? What are you going to do? Probably get fucking... Just throw curveballs? Just get fucking rocked? Right, so you have Walk to, six guys? Down and away first, okay? And you should be able to do that by the time you get to the big leagues. I'll get out right now and pound down away glove side. You should be able to do that, right? So down and away has to be established. Then we can start fucking around with all this stuff up here and then down there. What do you make right? of this? You can't actually... 
if you can't execute down and away, you don't have the mechanics to execute other good stuff. Because if you have to get through to, to throw a good down and away, you have to get through the pitch. Your backside's got to clear. Yeah. Like you can't. Don't tell me you can't command down away, and then all of a sudden you're gonna have a good changeup. You're gonna be able to spin a breaking ball consistently. Your mechanic, if you, I don't know. That's how well, I was I th taught. I think it's probably the most difficult pitch to, most difficult pitch to throw consistently is the fastball down and away. It requires the most, uh, the most effort over your front side, and you have to finish with extension because a lot of times young kids are terrible at this. A lot of kids on Cooper's team fucking all young can kids do watching. It. So they'll throw and just stand straight up. They throw and stand straight up. You have that. That's lazy shit. I tell the kids, you have to. You watch like Scherzer. His entire upper half is like parallel with with the ground, right? He looks at the ground. You get through the pitch. You get extended. You're able to execute down and away, right? Everything kind of plays off of that. It's like you're. It's like you hitting drives today. Those were good. You you hit far drives. You're way better on the course than you are on the range. That's one of the worst range sessions anyone's ever put together. Can we slice in a little bit of this for our audio or for the video put portion it's, of this? I'm humbled by the game of golf. You know, like I'm just myself. What do you want me to do about it? I want I, you I was, to be yourself. I was doing my best. You're it didn't go well for me. Like I, I was trying to help you today through it mentally on the course because you were in a bad place. I was. I was trying to pick you up. No, I wasn't in a bad spot. I just mm, couldn't, I couldn't nah. get off the tee. Just admit it. I just couldn't get off the tee. But my point is, I'm totally okay with with being terrible on the range yesterday. I had a good time with you and Colin, and then you know when Hank showed up, things got even better. Okay, so fucking be more positive. I'm a positive fucking guy. Don't you start spinning this around. Well, I, I love doing the show with you. How's it going? We'll see. We'll see if we continue. How How's it going? Uh, so far, so good. Yeah. So far, so good. Nice views. Nice views. Uh, I want to go watch a fucking baseball game now. I after do. doing this. The Cubs play the White Sox tonight. I want to go to the game. They're in Chicago. Okay. Do you have professional teams in Austin? Well, University of Texas is that team. There is uh, There's a soccer team here now. I haven't gone to see him yet. It's supposed to be legit. Austin it's supposed FC. to be supposed to be phenomenal. I'd yeah. love to go. I love soccer. I love soccer. I'm, I got the bug. So I was in. Be yeah, yeah, yeah. Use game a game time, time app. app. We use a game time app. For there it is. For all we use it to go. To, we're gonna go to an Austin, Austin FC game. We're gonna use a game time app. Yeah. We're gonna well, have a blast. Well, we should go across the pond too and, and do one of those big games. We gotta change the name. We have to. We have to. Not so. of, not of the game time app, but of of the show. No, yeah, we were out of the ad read, but I would like to, if we could change the name of the show, we got to come up with some stats. Help us out, guys and girls. Let like, us know. Help us out. You know, no, none of that corny shit you were coming up with. I, see now, if if you're just gonna talk shit to me now at the end of the show, I'm gonna talk shit to you. All right. Please bring it. I thought you'd be stronger. We worked out today. You doing seventy pound dumbbell single arm snatches. When I know you have more in the tank, is a little offensive to me. I wasn't trying to max out. Okay, I was going for reps. Let's go. We we had a nice time. No one got hurt. You, you want me to injure myself? I have a show to do. Will you have the Cy Young Award uh, no, present no. in the background? If you if you haven't learned that about me by now no i'm you curious, will you will no i was just I'm curious just not, what I'm you're not doing big the on the personal memorabilia will stuff. you still have your fucking championship ring from the arizona fall league in it's 2007 in stores somewhere i just know that it's i walked in, my, in on you in polishing it this I know, morning i know that it's in my possession you polished it this morning no I, I showed you the spot in the house where i'm gonna have just a little bit of memorabilia yeah. right like i'll have a jersey some pictures yeah. and shit right but you're not gonna see like ja 49 fucking plastered all over the house same thing with me, Carl number 43. You're not going to see a lot of Carl 43. Okay. Actually, I will hang my college jersey behind me on this show. Well, you should. You should have some stuff, right? Just you need to hang on to something. Yeah. I'll have something in there. I don't know what it's going to be. Why don't you help me out? I had two Texas flags delivered to the house today. One was the original flag from uh, their independence, which is a beautiful flag. And the other one is from the Battle of Gonzales, the come and take it flag. That's badass. Flag. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So those will be in there. We'll have some. We'll have some cool stuff. But that's why I need you, Hank, and Colin to kind of help me out with yeah. what to put in there. We're gonna help you out with that. We're also gonna get out on the road and go to some games. That's yeah. something we talked about. I'm excited to like actually take you to Wrigley, and you have to just be like a regular. Will you show me around? 
just regular bystander. Like, you'll have to wait in line at Murphy's Bleachers. It's going to be hilarious. It's going to be hilarious watching you take swings at sluggers after a game drunk. It's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really drink, but I'm just kidding. You know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't? I drink. You don't party. I actually heard that about you when we were doing the show. They're like, oh, you're doing a show with Jake. Yeah, like, yeah, just yeah. so you sure, know, he's sure. like stoned. He's super sure. sober. He Come like on, gets. <clears throat> I've done things you've only seen in movies. What type of movies? Just all of them. X, triple X movies? Porn movies? Do you. Or triple. What, I don't know yeah, where you're going. Porn movies, that. porn movies. Yeah, I'm sure you've done a lot of the same stuff I've done. Yeah. Yeah. In that regard. This is going to be a good time, man. That'll be fun. We're going to have good guest lists. Yeah, we need Bauer. We need. Um, Fuck. I'd like to talk to fucking Gosman. Man, I, I wish he would have taught me. We were in Baltimore for a brief time. He didn't fucking show me that changeup grub. He's too busy eating powdered donuts. We slept next to each other when we were at fucking Baltimore Fan Fest, and he never showed me that grip. They you put, believe it? They made you guys split hotel rooms? Or maybe he just... I think he might have passed out in my room. I don't know Something if... Like that. Yeah, I think he passed out. Yeah. Good kid. Love him. Fuck. Nice tattoos, too. We'll get that story. Are we good? You got anything else? I think we're good, man. Yeah. Um, we'll be back next week. This is starting nine for now. Uh, and then I, I want to know next week about the, um, if you are still on speaking terms with Sean Rodriguez but until then we'll see you guys we'll next get to week. that then yeah, yeah we'll do that next All week right see you next time